jayo radha madhav kum jabi ani jayo radha madhav jayo radha madhav kum jabi ani jayo radha श्री श्री राधा माधव की जय श्री राम प्रभु पाद की जय निताई गौर प्रेमनंदे हरि 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 बोल Chaitanya Charitamrita, 23rd chapter, <coughs> text 62, but we have to read also 61, that's no purpose. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvita Chandra Jaya 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 Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Okay, like this is too high. Um, Maybe the table is better. Sorry. I'm not used to to use the computer, but to read the verse, but because I choose some other verses <coughs> instead of going from one book to another, it's more easy to read like this. <clears throat> so text 61 Udgurna vivasa cesta divyan madanama virae krishna sporti apnake krishna jnana Translation by his divine grace Shira Prabhupada ki yeah. Udgurna and steadiness and vivasa cesta Boastful activities are aspects of transcendental madness. In separation from Krishna, one experiences the manifestation of Krishna and one thinks oneself to be Krishna. Now we go to the verse of today. <coughs> Uh, 
Sambhoga Vipralamba Vidad Vividha Shringara Sambhoga Vipralamba Vidad Vividha Shringara Sambhogera Nantanga Nai Antatara Sambhogera Nantanga Nai Antatara Sambhoga Vipralamba Vidad Vividha Shringara Sambhoga Vipralamba Vidad Vividha Shringara Sambhogera Antanga Nai Antatara Sambhogera Antanga Nai Antatara Sambhoga Vipralamba Vedit Vividha Shringara Sambhoga Vipralamba Vedit Vividha Shringara Sambhogera Antanga Nai Antatara Sambhogera Antanga Nai Antatara Sambhoga Vipralamba Vedit Vividha Shringara Sambhoga Vipralamba Vedit Vividha Shringara Sambhogera Nantanga Nayantatara Sambhogera Nantanga Nayantatara Sambhoga Vipralamba Pede Vivita Shringara Sambhoga Vipralamba Pede Vivita Shringara Sambhogera Nantanga Nayantatara Sambhogera Nantanga Nayantatara Ladies, Sambhoga Vipralamba Veda Divita Sankapa Shingara Sambhoga Vipralamba Veda Divita Shingara Sambhoga Vira Nanta Anga Nahi Antatara Sambhoga Vira Nanta Anga Nahi Antatara So we are reading word by word. Samboga of meeting, enjoyment together. Vipralamba of separation. Bede in two divisions. Dvi Vida Shringara. Two kinds of conjugal love. Sambhogera, of the stage of Samboga, or meeting. Ananta Anga, unlimited parts. Nai, not, Anta, anend, Tara, of death. Translation. In conjugal law of Shringara, there are two departments, meeting and separation. On the platform of meeting, there are unlimited varieties that are beyond description. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Vipralamba is described in the Ujvala Nilamani, Vipralamba Prakarna 3 to 4. Yanora yukta yor bavo, yukta yor vata yomita, abista lingana dinam, anavaptu prakrishyate, savi pralambo vigyaya, sambogo natikaraka, navi navi pralambena, samboga pushtimashnute. When the lover and the beloved meet, they are called yukta, connected. Previous to their meeting, they are called ayukta, not connected. Whether connected or not connected, the static emotion arising due to not being able to embrace and kiss each other as this desire, as desire is called vipralamba. This vipralamba helps nourish emotions at the time of meeting. Similarly, Samboga is described in the following verse quoted from the Vedic literature by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakura in his Anubhasya. Darshanalinganadinam anukulyena nishvasya 
ni shivaya yunur ulasham aran bhava samboga iryate meeting each other and embracing each other are aimed at bringing about the happiness of the lover and the beloved when this stage becomes increasingly jubilant the resultant ecstatic emotion is called samboga when awakened samboga is divided into four categories one purvaraga anantara after purvaraga attachment prior to meeting samboga is called brief shankshipta two mana anantara after mana anger based on love samboga is called ankrochet sankirna kin eh, third kinchi dura pravasha anantara or sampanna after being a little distance away from some time samboga is called accomplish it sudura pravasha anantara after being far away samboga is called perfection samriddhin man samriddhi man the meeting of the lovers that take place in dreams also have these four divisions Om Gyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Girim Yat Kripatamam Vande Shri Gurum Dinataranam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Samboka vipralamba vedet vivida shringara sambogera nanta anga nayantatara. In conjugal law of shringara, there are two departments, meeting and separation. On the platform of meeting, there are unlimited varieties that are beyond description. So again, we are here <laughs> with a chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita that is not so easy to for us to understand uh, but by the blessing of the devotees maybe something i will be able to say <coughs> so here we can see that in conjugal love that is called shringara uh, is divided in two parts one is samboga and the other is vipralamba samboga is when uh, there is the meeting from the two part and uh, vipralamba is considered to be uh, the feeling before meeting it's called the feeling of separation uh, from distance so what what is explained here is that uh, in the level of uh, uh, samboga when there is this meeting uh, there are unlimited varieties that are beyond descriptions so <clears throat> how to understand this is not so easy and especially to explain so i was thinking to go and search something more and i found another interesting verse that i like to share with you uh, 
Actually, this is explained in Nectar of Devotion by Sri Rupa Goswami. At certain point, he explained that conjugal love is divided into two portions, vipralamba or conjugal love in separation, and samboga or conjugal love in direct contact. Then he says, vipralamba separation has three subdivisions known as purvaraga, preliminary attraction, two, mana or seeming anger, and three, pravasa or separation by distance. Then he explains. He gives some example, very interesting. When the lover and the beloved have a distinct feeling of not meeting each other, that stage is called purvaraga or preliminary attraction. In Padiavali, Radharani told her companion, My dear friend, I was just going to the bank of the Yamuna, and all of a sudden, a very nice boy whose complexion is a dark blue cloud became visible in front of my eyes. He glanced over me in a way that I cannot describe. But since this has occurred, I am sorry that I can no longer engage my mind in the duty of my household affair. This is an instance of preliminary attraction for Krishna. So this is interesting because um, we see one of the meaning of Krishna is the most attractive, is attracting everyone. And somehow or other we can see that people they are attracted by Krishna in one way or another. And when they become attracted, you know, there is this preliminary feelings of Samboga, unite, unity to Krishna. <clears throat> this is still on the level of Vipralamba, no? but it's a preliminary, means to be attracted to Krishna and not to be in union with him is already a symptom that become expressed by the natural love that link us to Krishna. And we can see this when uh, we are going in Sankirtan. People, they are somehow or other attracted to the devotee. Not everyone, but <laughs> it also depends on we, how much we are <clears throat> representing Krishna, how much we, we can be transparent and let Krishna show himself to the people. But when they become attracted, it's something very special that the devotee feel. You know, the devotee must always remember that they are not attracted to me, they are attracted to Krishna. And they can see, you know, they start to smile, they start to make different eyes, they start to be gentle, they start to relate in a different way. This is because they become attracted to Krishna. And uh, here Shimati Radharani say, you know, I cannot go anymore longer with my duty, you know, since I saw this boy, this blackish blue boy, you know, there. I cannot anymore do my duties. And we experience this in Sankirtan, when someone is very much attracted. You know, then whatever you say, yeah, they're very nice very good, yes, yes, and they, they go like this, you know, they, their mind changed completely, you know. It's incredible. <clears throat> then here he says also, in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 53rd, 53rd chapter, verse 2, Krishna told the messenger Brahmana, who came from Rubmini, my dear Brahmana, just like Rubmini, I cannot sleep at night, and my mind is always fixed on her. I know that her brother Rukmi is against me, and due to his persuasion, my marriage with her has been cancelled. 
This is another instance of preliminary attraction. So we can see that this attraction <coughs> is not only we become attracted to Krishna, but also Krishna become attracted to his devotees. No. Here Krishna become attracted to Rukmini. And uh, he told this to this Brahmana. <coughs> So there is a reciprocation always between us and Krishna. It's not only one side. There is also the other side. And the other side is very encouraging and very helpful. But Krishna is not doing this just because, you know, he feels uh, in depth to do, because we are doing something for him, then he has to do something for us. No, he's doing because he's getting pressure in relating in this way. As far as mana or anger, because maybe you were asking yourself, you know, well, how will be this anger? You know, here is nicely explained. In concern, there is. The following incident describing Gita Govinda. When Srimati Radharani saw Krishna enjoying himself in the company of several other gopis, she became a little jealous, jealous because her special prestige was being dimmed, we say dimmed, covered, dimmed, cop, eh? dimmed, dimmed, covered. Mm. Mm. Therefore, she immediately left the scene and took shelter in a nice flower bush, bush where the black drone were humming. Then, hiding herself behind the, the creepers, she began to express her sorrow to one of her consorts. This is an instance of a seeming disagreement. So here we can see that it's called anger. And in the explanation in this example, it's explaining is a disagreement. Because it's not the same anger, the same material anger. No? It's a completely spiritual anger. And uh, as another feeling. So disagreement. Um, this, uh, this kind of disagreement increased the pleasure of Lord Krishna. <coughs> For example, when there is a nice example also, when Krishna <coughs> in Dvaraka told to Rumini that, you know, uh, I want to leave. I cannot stay anymore here. And he was explaining why. And then Rukmini, she was feeling already, you know, this symptom of separation of Krishna, although he was there. And she didn't agree. But her disagreement, she didn't say something. She was manifesting to to bodily um, reactions. And Krishna knew to read the body language. For example, with it is said that with a uh, feet, he, she was um, with a nail of a feet, she was grasping the ground, you know. Because she, she didn't agree and she developed some some fear and some kind of anger also. And different symptoms show and Krishna he, he feel more happiness. Now we can say, you know, Krishna is it's not so good to put someone in a, such a position of suffering. 
But we cannot understand these things. We can just, you know, try to to accept, try to to repeat and to learn about the spiritual reality. And then by the pr process of purification, one day we'll be able maybe to understand this level. We can see after. I will read something in relation to this. Uh -huh. An example of par uh, pravasa, or being out of contact because of living in a distant place, is given in the Padyavali as follows. Since the auspicious day when Krishna left for Mathura, Srimata Radharani has been pressing her head on one of her hands and constantly shedding tears. Her face is always wet now, and therefore there is no chance of her sleeping over for a moment. When the face becomes wet, the sleeping tendency is immediately removed. So when Radharani was always weeping for Krishna because of his separation, there was no chance of her getting any sleep for herself. In the Pralada Samhita, Uddhava says, the Supreme Personality of God at Govinda, pain stricken due to being pierced by the arrow of Cupid, is always thinking of you, the gopis, and he is not even accepting his regular lunch, nor is he getting any proper rest. So again here we can see reciprocation. No? Uh, Shimati Radharani in this feeling of Vipralamba, and he is considered Seva, there is the Vipralamba Seva. It's been the service in separation of the Lord. And actually this is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come to show us. The, the, the Vipralamba Seva. The, the, to be able to go on with our service without being united with Krishna in Samboga. Jai Lord Jagannath Baladesh Vadramarani Ki. Jai. Shri Shri Ki. Jai. So on this level of Vipralamba, we can see Srimati Radharani, since Krishna left Mathura, she was always, you know, with the head on his hand and weeping constantly. And because the face became wet, then she could not sleep anymore. This is a trick that in India they are using the taxi driver when they drive you from <laughs> Mayapur to Calcutta night time or to Calcutta to Mayapur night time. You know, suddenly, you know, they, they start to fall to sleep, then they stop, they go out and they take water and put in the face. Then they go in in the taxi and they drive again. Yeah. So, it is the fact when the face becomes wet, then it's difficult to sleep. It's a good trick maybe before to come to class. <laughs> Put some water, then you don't fall asleep. Of course, it's depending on the speaker also, not only on you. <coughs> uh, but then again, reciprocation. No? Uh, uh, Uddhava, when he went to see the gopis in Vrindavana, he told to them, you know, that Krishna has this feeling of separation of you, and he forget even to get his lunch, you know, because he's constantly thinking about the gopis in Vrindavan. So you see, reciprocation. Mm -hmm. When the lover and the beloved come together 
and enjoy one another by direct contact, this stage is called Samboga. There is a statement in Padyavali as follows. Krishna embraced Srimati Radharani in such an expert manner that he appeared to be celebrating the dancing ceremony of the peacocks. So again, when, when we are hearing these kind of feelings between Krishna, Srimati Radharani and the gopis, it seems to us that actually this feeling we find also between two lovers in, in the material way. And it's true. They are the same, but in the same time they are different. Because the feelings that two lovers got, they are normally based on physical attraction gross attraction or subtle attraction. Also. We know that we have two bodies, the gross body, the five gross elements, and the subtle body, the three subtle elements. Mm. So the attraction is based on bodily conception mm. by the influence of lust. These symptoms, this kind of relation in the spiritual world between Krishna, Srimati Radharani, the gopis, has nothing to do with this. First of all, because the gross body is not there, the subtle body is not there, it's just a spiritual body. And the relation between the two is based, is purely spiritual. Now, to understand what is purely spiritual, at least for me, is some difficulty. Uh, for this reason, I like to share with you another verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita in another chapter. Uh, it's a famous chapter when uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke with Ramananda Roy. I think last week, last Sunday, uh, Razikacharya Prabhu spoke about uh, Ramananda Roy. He built up the different questions and answers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was very nice done. And there is a certain point, a verse, that uh, I go to the purport, but I read also the verse, then you get an idea. Uh, saying this, Ramananda Roy began to sing a song he had composed. But, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of the ecstasy of love of God, immediately covered Ramananda's mouth with his own hand. So he stopped it. <laughs> Don't go. Purport. We need the purport by Srila Prabhupada. He said, the topics that are about to be discussed between Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy cannot be understood by a materialistic poet nor by intelligence or material perception. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakur states that the spiritual mellow can be realized only when one is situated on the transcendental platform beyond the material stage of goodness. That platform is called Vishuddha Sattva. Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Sabditam. Realization of the Vishuddha Sattva platform is beyond the pale of the material world and is not perceived by bodily senses or mental speculation. In other words, we cannot understand with our mind. We cannot understand with our senses. We should go over the platform of uh, sattva, goodness, 
we should reach the level of Vishuddha Sattva. Then now, how is it possible to reach this level of Vishuddha Sattva? Our identification with the gross body and subtle mind is different from spiritual understanding. Since the intelligence and mind are material, the loving affair of Sri Radha and Krishna are beyond their perception. And now come the point. Sarvopadi vinir muktam tat parit vina nirmalam. When we are free from all material designations and our senses are completely purified by the bhakti process, we can understand the sense activity of the Absolute True, Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhaktir, Uchate. So this is a famous verse that uh, Srila Rupa Goswami indicated at the beginning of Nectar of Devotion. It comes actually from Narada Pancharat. Uh, and just to get the proper translation of these words in order to understand better, he says, Bhakti or devotional service means engaging all our senses in the service of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of God, the Master of all senses. When the spirit soul renders service unto the Supreme, there are two side effects. One is free from all material designation and one's senses are purified simply by being employed in the service of the Lord. So this is the way to go. You know, there is a class of devotees, the sages. Then they are convinced that by feeling these kinds of uh, relations between the lover and beloved, between devotees, actually, on the bodily platform, uh, they come. They can come to realize the the spiritual reality. Uh, they are playing the role to be Krishna and Gopis, and they are going through this experience. But this is rejected by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Is rejected by the Goswami. Why? Because at the beginning of Nectar of Devotion, Rupa Goswami explained. It cannot be in this way. You can purify your senses uh, <clears throat> and your mind by engaging, fully engage your senses in the practice of devotional service. And then, when the, the, the senses they become fully sp spiritualized, purified, then at that moment, Krishna will reveal the, the reality of the spiritual world. And he will reveal, will give us the, the understanding how it works spiritually. There is no other way. So there is no way that simply by speculating between us and try to, you know, understand with our teeny, teeny mind. <coughs> the relation between Krishna and the gopis and Shimati Radharani doesn't work. First we have to become purified. Srila Prabhupada used to say, first work and then samadhi. <clears throat> so there is a lot to do. Now we have really to engage our mind 
in hearing the holy name of the Lord and hearing the Krishna Katha and think about how I can improve my service to the Lord, how I can engage better my senses. We have to make a plan for this, 24 hour plan. Then the process of purification works, it's guaranteed. Srila Prabhupada said this, this science or self-realization is a science, scientific. If you do in the proper way, it works. But if we try to speculate and try to find the shortcut, will not work. The year passes, we become old, and still we keep our attachment. Attachment, they don't go simply, you know, by going on and perform the same things. <clears throat> Need a purification. Of course, sometimes to, to strongly stop one attachment can, can create some problems. But in the same time, we should not think, okay, I go on and simply it will come. One day I wake up and the attachment is gone. No, it's a progressive way. One side we should do an effort, we should uh, strive to, to renounce to an attachment. And then the other side, the purification will help us to become detached. So there are always the two sides. <coughs> Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, proportionally how you are surrendered to me, I am revealing to you. It's not only one way, there are the two ways. We see there is always two ways. It's reciprocation. Our endeavor and then Krishna's mercy. This is a very important point. And I read a little bit more of this purple because it's very interesting. The spiritual senses are beyond the material senses. A materialist can think only of the negation of material variety. He cannot understand spiritual variety. He thinks that spiritual variety simply contradicts material variety and is a negation of void, or void, sorry. But such conceptions cannot even reach the precincts of spiritual realization. The wonderful activities of the gross body and subtle mind are always imperfect. They are below the degree of spiritual understanding and are ephemeral. Ephemeral means transitory, something that Today is there, tomorrow is not there. It's an illusion. The spiritual melov is eternally wonderful and is described as purna, shuddha, nitya, mukta. That is complete, perfectly pure, and eternally liberated from all material conceptions. All material conceptions. You have to understand this. All material conceptions must be there no any teeny teeny attachment. <laughs> Once Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakura says that in order to go to the spiritual world, you have to go through one hole. And he asks, you know how much is the size of this hole? Yes, one ten thousand part of the tin of the hair. This means the size of soul. the soul. The soul will be pure. Nothing has to be around. 
I don't know if you know about mechanic. Mechanic, sometimes they have to do one piece, iron piece, that has to go in in another iron piece. No. Especially if it's round. No. It has to be perfect. If it's a little, little bit more, don't go in. It has to be perfect. So this means no any kind of attachment. When we are unable to fulfill our material desires, there is certainly sorrow and confusion. This may be described as vivarta, but in spiritual life, there is no sorrow, inebriety, or imperfection. Phila Ramananda Roy was expert in realizing the spiritual activity of Srimati Radharani and Krishna, and Ramananda's spiritual experience was placed before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as he inquired whether the Lord approved his relation or of spiritual truth. No? So again, uh, I read again this phrase. Um, Ramananda's spiritual experience was placed before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as he inquired whether the Lord approved his realization of spiritual truth. This is also an interesting point. No. First of all, we see that generally, Srila Rupa Goswami didn't tell too much in Nectar of Devotion in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu about relation between uh, Radha and Krishna and the gopis. He quotes something, but not much. You have to go other scripture in order to see. Then, we can see that uh, Srila Prabhupada did the same. Hmm? Hmm. If you go through these purports, <coughs> often there are incredible verses, but there is no purport. Prabhupada is not going in to explain. And when he's giving an explanation, he always go to the explanation that we should work on ourselves in order to reach the level to understand these things. So then why this is in Chaitanya Charitamrita? Hmm? Hmm. Generally also Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami didn't spoke so much about Radha and Krishna and the gopis. Hmm? And, but then there is this chapter with Ramananda Roy. And I think that uh, Rasikacharya Prabhu explained very nicely last week then we should understand also what is the goal. This is important, to know where we, where we can go and develop the desire to go there. This is important. But then we should not speculate. And this is the way how Ramananda Roy showed to us. You know, it was going on and then he come to this verse and uh, here it is said that he, he wanted to see the reaction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu if he, he approved his realizations. So sometimes we think that we are very realized, at least I speak for myself. And when we share our realization with an advanced devotee, then we realize that, you know, <laughs> you are not at all realized. This is very important that we are doing. We should always share our, our realizations with advanced devotees. Because, you know, spiritual understanding, spiritual realization is never ending. Anandam Burdi Vardhanam is always increasing. And this keeps us also humble. And humility is very important in the practice of devotional service. Without humility, we cannot advance in spiritual life. So we see that here Ramananda Roy didn't become puffed up because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, go, go more, go more. You know, they said, oh, I'm speaking so nice, you know. Then <laughs> going, you know. No, even become more humble. And uh, 
he wanted to see if Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approved his realization. So, this is not something that only bhaktas has to do, but on any stage of our spiritual life, first initiation, second initiation, even sannyas, even guru, GBC, any, any position uh, one has as always to confront himself with advanced devotee or at least with devotee that consider to be on the same level. Uh, it's a practice that uh, in our movement many advanced devotees they are doing. You know, even gurus, sometimes they are meeting each other and they are sharing their realizations and just to confront with others devotee and see if it's really a good realization or not. And the danger is when we stop to do this. Then we think, you know, I am enough advanced. You know, I just come to give the class. But I never sit there. We should keep humble. And when somebody, some devotee, is sitting in the Vyasa Sun, we should see that he is empowered by the Lord to say something useful. So today I'm here, yesterday I was there. And I hear a very nice class. And I got some realization and I got some confirmation also of my realization by hearing. very important that we are doing this. <clears throat> so we can get an idea of this uh, Samboga and Vipralamba because if we think our experience, uh, then, uh, you know, we get some idea. But to really understand how it works, we need to become purified, go through the process. And that what we should insist for ourselves to do. Okay, I end here. There is any question, any comment, any realization? on this topic. Thank you, Bhakti Alavi Prabhu, for this nice class. I want to share a realization to see if it's correct or not. Please. In my personal practice of Krishna consciousness, I experience that often when I engage, especially in the practice of hearing, in a regulated way. For example, okay, I'm a temp devotee, I'm supposed to go to Bhagavatam class, no matter who is giving the class. And then sometimes I, there is the other way, I, I want to hear a very, I, I go and search for the nectar and and my experience is, or I listen from my Guru Maharaj or Srila Prabhupada because I know that I'm supposed to, I'm a disciple and I have to hear always. It's out of duty. And then there is more the out of... I see often a difference that the realization I have, it's, it's like a process and it's coming from within. And if I align myself in the right way, in the right mood, it doesn't, often I feel it doesn't, <coughs> it doesn't matter who speaks, because I feel I'm engaging in the process and I can feel Krishna is from within, revealing many things and 
not always so much dependent on who who is then really speaking. And I want to share that experience and realization. And I forget it often, meaning then I again go on the mental platform and oh, why should I go? And um, but that's my experience. And maybe you can say something. Yes, it's an interesting question. First of all, we have to see why I am listening. What is the real motivation? <coughs> because materially speaking, there is always <coughs> material motivations. <coughs> and because we are still covered, then there are still some <coughs> material motivation behind. <coughs> so we should find out. <coughs> if we want to hear, <coughs> because he's telling nice story, you know, I am learning some new story that I can tell myself to others, <coughs> or because, you know, he, he knows some topics that uh, <coughs> nobody speaks. You know, sometimes we go in this routine that, that we are thinking that, you know, I need to hear something new, something more. If we hear the classes that Srila Prabhupada was giving at the beginning, most of the classes they were speaking about, we are not this body, <laughs> from different angles. He was not building up big philosophy. Because he said, you know, first you have to understand this, and otherwise how, how we go on. Huh? <coughs> so, when, uh, when there is still these motivations, then it doesn't work. It remains there just at the level of, of the mind, empirical level but it don't go deep in your heart. In order to go deep in your heart, we should first of all see that the one we speak is not this body. It depends also on the on the, how we can say, respect that you have in the other, the body. If he's sitting a sannyasi or for a guru, then of course everyone is like this. And it's because you have the right attitude, then it works. If you have not the right attitude, for example, I don't know, wrong attitude can be, you know, if there is a guru, then everyone is silent, very attentive, very like this. If there is common devotee, let's say, like this, then you know, I'm speaking with the next one, I'm watching my mobile phone, I'm, you know, something is going on there immediately, I'm distracted. So it's not respect. And without this respect, there is not the union. And the message did not go. It's not depending only on the speaker. It's depending also very much on the audience. If the audience they are eager to, to listen, then Krishna will reveal to the speaker. Maybe I told you already the story when I give first class, how it happened, and I was giving my first class. I, th I think I... I was still a Bhakta, and I was in the temple in Ticino, on the farm project. And then one spiritual master came, and he was staying for some, some days, you know, I think one, one week or even more. And then uh, all the body were coming you know, and attained the Bhagavatam class in the morning. So one day everyone was sitting there, eager to hear. And then he came, 
And instead of sitting in the Vyasasana, he sits in the middle of the devotees. And then the temple president says, please sit in the Vyasasana. Yes. No, he says, today, sitting here. See, and then, then who will give the class? And he says, anyone can give the class. Yeah, but uh, no, anyone. He, then he turned and I was nearby and he said, he can give the class. <laughs> 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 And then, uh, but he's a bhakta, and uh, I have heard that he's, he's going in Sankirtan. He's a Sankirtan devotee, right? He said, yes, yes, Sankirtan. So, Sankirtan devotee must know the philosophy. If he's going out and preach Krishna consciousness, so we want to hear from him. <laughs> so without preparing the class and nothing, you know, the, the temple president asked me, okay, please sit and give the class. <laughs> so this was my first class, you know. And of course, you know, it's, I don't describe the beginning, you know, it was really complete anxiety and, you know, <laughs> look all the face. But he was very serious, no? And he was serious, but also humble in the same time, and I think he was giving blessing, you know. And somehow or other, I surrender. I pray, of course, in my heart, I was deeply praying to be able to say something. I don't know, I don't remember what was the topic and nothing. And, but finally I could speak. So just to say, you know, that... And I got a lesson from this. And uh, when I was temple president in Ticino, I encouraged everyone to give class. And some devotees, they didn't want it to give, you know. I said, no, why not, you know. And I know, I know one devotee, don't mention the name, no. He really insisted he didn't want it to... And because he was same age of me, and I think he, was, he joined one year before, I could not really push him, you know, I didn't want to push him, but I tried to encourage him, encourage, encourage. And then finally one day he decided, okay, I will give the class. And then, you know, he discovered the taste, and now he likes to give classes, <laughs> no? he likes very much. Sometimes he's giving also here in, in Zurich, <clears throat> when he's coming. Anyway, just to say that and another instance, I mentioned already this example. Once I was in Mayapur, and one um, new sannyasi was giving class. And then, in the question time, one devotee uh, made a question, and this question was quite an um, intense question, and um, <clears throat> very scholarly question. And then <coughs> on the audience was Ridayananda Maharaj, and then he, he said, maybe Maharaj would like to answer this question. And he said, no, I will not answer this question. No, please, please, no. He said, you are sitting on the Vyasa You are representing Vyasa Dev. You should answer this question. Why should I answer this question? For me, it was a great teaching. Because, you know, Definitely, probably, I don't know, cannot say definitely, but probably, Nanda Maharaj will know more about this topic and give more a scholar answer. But he makes the point, you know, you are sitting in the Vyasa and you are representing Vyasa Deva, you are in power. And finally, just to go back to your question, no? what we should understand is that. Uh, the real, <clears throat> the real meaning to listen is that we become encouraged to practice devotional service. So if I uh, attentively and in the proper way listen, I will become encouraged. I will get something, for sure. So this is the attitude. And we can learn from everyone. We can go even more far, you know. When, when, when we develop this attitude, not only in classes, but also the attitude to respect others, we can learn also from people that they are not practice devotional service. But we have to rise our consciousness. We have to become conscious that also these people 
they are led by Krishna, by the Paramatma in their heart. And see the Paramatma in their heart. Like to add something? Yeah, it just reminds me of Bhakti Siddhanta. He once uh, made this statement that Jagat Guru is a Jagat Guru because he sees everyone as a Guru. Yes. Then he's Jagat Guru because he sees Krishna in everyone. Yes. We are not in this level. We cannot do artificially. You know, just, you know, one karmi told you, you know, jump down from the bridge. It's always Krishna telling me to jump down from the bridge and I jump down. It's, but it's not this. But we should try to to at least become more aware about this. Remember. Remind us. You know that Krishna is in his heart. When we are offering the obeisance to the devotees, actually I find out that many devotees, they don't know this. We are offering obeisance to Krishna in their heart. <laughs> For this advanced devotee, you know, they are not looking, you know, is senior than me, is, is younger than me. I expect that he's giving me obeisance. No. No. The first time I, I meet my spiritual master, he offered obeisance to me. <laughs> he was a griasta. <laughs> some devotee, he was with a, in Mayapur, with some brahmacharis from America. And, among them was Vijay Prabhu, the Sankirtan minister. And then when he saw me, I was just become married. And few years <clears throat> before, we were doing parikram together as a brahmachari. And then when he saw me from distance, he called, Oh, Bhakti Alavya, come, come. I didn't know his holiness Radhanath Maharaj. It was the first time I saw him, it was 92, I think, 1992. And then, uh, I arrived there and by his distance, which I say, you know, this is Bhakti Arabia, he's a famous book distributor from Switzerland. And immediately Maharaj fell on the floor and offered me obeisance. You know? And then I saw this is a sannyas, you know. I was feeling, you know. He's like this. Huh? Because it's another level. So we should remind ourselves that Krishna is in the heart of the devotee and they offer obeisance to the Lord in their heart that is guiding them. We have to come out from the Kanishta platform and at least go to the Madhyama platform. And this is through the attitude, proper attitude. Okay, we shall end before nine. And I think time is over. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Shira Prabhupada ki jai. Jai Shira Prabhupada.
course you can pick it up with we'll make it ready. Yeah. So you come up time. Very good, very good. Apesar de eu ter impacto bactéria lá dentro do 